All right, done. Let me find you going live on here so I can follow the chat as well. Yes, get it all sorted. Going. How are you anyway? Yeah, I'm doing good. Keeping yeah, busy. that's good. That's good to hear. Yeah. How's the uh, yeah. fourth lockdown treated you? Yeah. I'm not a, not a huge fan, as many of us are not. Uh, uh, it gets complicated in our house because we've uh, my wife's a teacher, so she has to teach from home. Oh my god! And then my, I've got a ten-year-old daughter, and she has to learn from home, and so my office just disappears. So I tend to have to do any work I've got to do after hours. Then so it just makes it a really long day. That's crazy, like yeah. actually crazy. I can't even believe that. Like, I don't, I don't know how people do it. I really don't know how people do it. I don't know how you do it's it with multiple well. children. Like, Abby, no. Abby's awesome, and you know, she she does all right with her schoolwork. But like, I've got to be there and supervise, and you know, be a part of it. So it's yeah, yeah it's pretty it's pretty full on. It's pretty full on. Yeah, I think I might have mentioned this on the stream a few times, but there's um. Definitely last year, Jarvis and I were high-fiving each other saying, you know that decision not to have children that we had like a few years ago? <laughs> kind, kind of really working in our favour this year, <laughs> like particularly for COVID, for the, for the homeschooling thing where people were pulling, obviously, you know, it's very tongue-in-cheek. Um, but it's, you know, we just were watching our friends really struggle with homeschooling and all of those things that are just so stressful on top of everything else, you know, pandemic yeah. and all of that shit that's going on. Um, just waiting to see, I think the, um, I think it just went out. I'm just going to check with my crew. Oh, I'm not on discord. Hang on a sec. That works. Oh, 80's here. So 80, did you get a notification? It's um it's super weird sometimes the notifications go out late. Uh, I think the notification's gone out now. I've just um I just realized that I forgot to connect to Discord as well, which is a bit silly. Um <laughs> just... But anyway, pe people will slowly join. It'll they'll realize that it's time for the stream and they'll they'll pop in for sure. Cool. I think my there we go. Um thanks, both on Discord and Twitch. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well that's good. That means it went out. It just went out a bit late, I think, so. Oh, good. All right, and yes. I'm going to follow the chat on my phone here as well. Oh, awesome. I was going to ask you if you want to pull up the chat. Um, the Discord just came through. I just linked to Discord, so that could be why. I was like, when I restart my computer, there's like a million things I have to do to stream, and then I always forget one thing. Like, I've forgotten my stream labels. Why do I need to do that as well? Have you ever streamed, Nate, with all the things you're going on? I, I you know. It's not, not been a, a, a thing for me. I tend to just bury my head in, in doing my art and my work. And I, I don't. Smart, yeah, smart. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've thought about it, but I'm not overly comfortable about being in front of cameras and in front of people. I tend to like to be behind the scenes. Yes. I feel you on that. I used to, oh, no, I should, I lie. I was going to say I, I wasn't ever, I mean, I'm definitely more comfortable now a year in than I was before. So, um, yeah, I'm looking at that um, 80 and also getting my stream deck sorted. So it's, it's a work in progress. Um, the hardest thing about streaming at the moment is like there's always so many little things to do. And the guy, um, Glow, that helps me with all the stuff lives in a completely t different time zone, which is in Scotland. So we've only got this like really small window of, and he works full time. And obviously I've got my, a million other things that I do. So we've always got these tiny windows yeah. to do stuff together. Um, so it's, a, it's always a work in progress, but you know, That's it's fair. happening. It's, you're, you're, and I'm like really bad with it as well. So no, I was just I'm a, such a slow it. learner. You're a natural. No, 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 no. I'm the opposite of a natural, whatever that is. <laughs> I'm the slowest of slow learners when it comes to this stuff. So, um, Jazz! Hi, Jazz. Oh, so good to see you here, Jazz. How are you? Um, I'm really excited to talk to you today, Nate. It's going to be a great chat. Um, for those who don't know, I've popped in um, a little Nightbot thing too, so it'll come up. It'll link to your portfolio. So while we're talking, um, people... Actually, you know what I need to do really quickly? I need to just check with my mods. 
Um, that someone's around. Du, 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 du. And then we'll get started. Uh. My Discord has weirdly frozen. Okay. Happy Tuesday to you. How are you? What's happening? What's happening in your world? Ah, uh, here we go. Jazz is always excited. It's <laughs> is the, the, he know, is. Have you ever watched much Simpsons in your? I have back in the day for sure. Day? Yeah. Yeah. So they had these episodes where there was this guy that was the happiest man in Springfield, and I just feel like oh. that's Jazz. Jazz is the happiest man in Springfield. He's the happiest man in Melbourne slash Springfield. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, you can't you can't catch up with Jazz and not walk away with a smile like he's. I totally agree with you. He's a good um, hug giver as well, and I appreciate people that are down for a, just a good genuine hug. I'm all about that. That's very much my vibe. Yep. Nice. So yeah, yeah he's very he's very much on that tip, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull up your website. Um, would cool. you prefer I start with your website or start with your Instagram? You can, or maybe it's it's either? your show. You can do what you please. <laughs> I love just how, you know, you're just down for whatever. Mahara, nice to see you here as well. How are you? Okay, I've just messaged the mods. Um, Captain Lasagna, Connor is here. Connor. So good to see you here. How are you? Thanks for tuning um, in. Oh. Maybe I'll just message, uh, just in case. Sorry for the delay. I'm just making sure we're all good to go before we actually good to go. Oh, Chloe's here. All good. It's no all good. Chloe's here. So I feel more comfortable with starting now <laughs> with a mod in the chat. So I was like, uh, feeling very naked there for a minute. <laughs> Oh my god, Gypsy Jay's around too. Hey, G hey, Jay. Yeah, I was. I don't know what happened with the notification. It was like super slow or something. Um, but I feel more comfortable starting properly now. So we're all good. We're all good. Well, all right. We're doing a proper welcome um, to Nate Hill, absolute legend, um, photographer, visual artist. Uh, now in the NFT space, which I'm so excited to talk to you about because I know I've joked about it. If the NFT thing comes up in my stream, I'm like, don't ask about it. Cause it's just one of those things that everybody's talking about. And I think I was on clubhouse the week that it just blew up. So all I was doing was listening to conversations about NFTs and I just got so sick of the term NFT, but <laughs> that's not to say we're definitely going to discuss it today. Cause it's actually a really interesting space. And I, I think that you're going to be a great person to explain to our community exactly what it is and how it works and all that sort of stuff. So um, very excited to do that. But first of all, how are you? How, good. What's happening you. in your world at the moment? I can see one of your prints. I should mention, I have one of your prints above me right here. We can't see it because I don't have a second camera. But it was one of my purchases when I set up the stream room was the first thing I wanted to do was get one of your prints in my stream room. So I've got a big print up here yeah. of yours. And it means a lot. It means a lot that, yeah. you, uh, that you did that and you have a piece of mine. Big fan. And Huge this fan. One's a, this one's a special one to me too because that's a, a tribute I made for my, my late uh, dad. So oh. I, I, I love having this one up as a, as a bit of a reminder. So cool. Yeah. So cool. Yep. Um, Gypsy J said, I hate NFTs. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> it's so funny. It definitely became like a kind of a running joke for a little while just because I, I mean, I get it. Everyone was so excited about the space. Um, and it just, and I think if you were on clubhouse in those first few weeks, it just like, if you looked in the hallway, every single, are you on, are you on clubhouse? Yeah. I don't spend a lot of time in there. I'm, uh, yeah, so you know how it works, how you've got like the hallway and you can see all the rooms that are running. It was just like every room was like, NFTs, NFTs, talk about NFTs. It was just like yeah. dominating the conversation. But um, Light and Lens, nice to see you here. Um, Jay saying, good for you for getting paid. I just think it's a dumb bubble. Okay, this is good. We're going to talk about all of this stuff because like 
We can talk about if we think it's a bubble, where we think it's going to go. I have a very, um, I would say, very baseline understanding of it. And I'm extremely interested in it. But I just haven't worked out a way that I think would work for me. We're going to talk about it, Chloe. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Anyway, we're going to talk about Nate first. We're going to talk about Nate first. We're going to talk a bit about his photography. I want to get a bit of a background. How did you get into photography? I know it was a bit of a kind of a long path for you, similar to me. Uh, and I love hearing these stories because I think, especially for younger people, they think, oh my God, I need to find out what I want to do straight away in life. And they get really anxious. Yeah. And there's some of us that it's a long path to finding, you know, what we're meant to be doing. So I'd love to hear your story. Yeah, for sure. Definitely a long path. So um, I studied visual arts at university um, uh, and majored in uh, printmaking and photography. So that was a that was the sort of the starting point there, and that was back in the days of the dark room, which you'd be familiar with, Michelle. So well, kind of. I um, obviously I'm aware of the dark room, but I have very limited experience in the dark room, other than. A tiny bit at high school. Okay, yeah. So I learned all the darkroom arts uh, back in the day and um, uh, decided to take a break from that course and go and pursue music for a while. So I was drummer in a few bands. Uh, ah, band boy. Yeah, band boy. It happens a fair bit in these creative circles. It but... so does. It really does. We're all ex-musicians, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Especially in music photography world. Yeah. It's like we're, we're all just like, we all wanted to be there, but we're not quite there. So we like taking photos of them. Just getting close to the stage, not on it, but close to it. Yes, yes, totally. Yeah. So um, pursued a bit of music, uh, did some little, you know, East Coast tours of Australia in, in bands that, you know, never really did heaps, but just loved being in bands, you know, releasing music and playing live. And yeah. Um, uh, as I was doing that, because it's you, I couldn't make a living out of it. I was teaching drums as well. So, oh, awesome. Yeah. So that was a, and that turned into a full time gig for me teaching drums. So I didn't end up going back and finishing my visual arts course. So there's that. But um. Oh wow! How long were you doing that for? How long were you um teaching? Teaching drums. Uh, mm. almost twenty years. Holy like, shit. Yeah. I think too, when you find a pathway that's like paying the bills, yeah. <laughs> you're like, this is actually earning me money versus trying to take that step into a visual craft that may or may not pay off. Like I can totally see why that yeah. might've been a decision that you made at the start. Yeah. Yeah. And I enjoyed teaching. Like I actually really enjoy the one-on-one -on -one interaction with the students and like uh, imparting, you know, whatever I could skill wise to them, but also that sort of, I, I, really passionate about music so I really enjoyed you know bringing that little bit into their world and that generally they wanted to be there um, uh, you know they're getting out of their mass class to come play drums so it was generally a really kind of good space this is all a very roundabout way of telling you that while I was teaching drums too I uh, was the hobby was uh, doing landscape photography Ah, so, cool. So as I would um, drive, I'd, I'd often have to uh, do long-ish drives to, to teach drums. So I'd, I'd pull over on the side of the road and take snaps, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then uh, I started selling a few of those prints. Let me, I've just got a quick question for you because yep. you were saying before that you, had a, you really loved the one-on-one -on -one aspect of the drum, teach, the drum teaching. Yeah. But then you go shoot landscape. So for me, the reason that I've never been drawn to landscapes, other than like, you know, it's nice to take beautiful photos of landscape, but there's no one on one. Because that's what I'm really drawn to with my photography is the portrait stuff, really connecting with people. And you kind of went the other way. Like, what was, was there a reason for that? Uh, no, I think just landscapes was something that I could do by myself that was creative. Uh, that I could just sort of throw myself into and I knew uh, that I could get something that I would be happy with out of that, putting that time into that, you know, creativity. So I, I am, I do like to be around people. So I, I, yeah. <laughs> you know, I would, uh, I do like that, that interaction. So that's why I do, yeah. I still do like to do some uh, portrait photography. Portrait stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
But um, yeah, the landscape stuff was probably just more what I felt like I could use my time with while I was doing my, you know, drum teaching as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably where that came from. Just a creative outlet. Yeah. You don't have clients, like other clients, to that are going to bug you for photos or whatever. You can just do it in your own time, yeah. on the side, and yeah. yeah. So, um, Mahera, just so you know, um, this is the this is Nate's series called Twisted Landscapes that we're looking at at the moment. I just popped on that slideshow for cool. uh, people to get a bit of a vibe of some of your more recent work. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and these Twisted Landscapes are, you know, definitely part of this journey. So, from that landscape mm -hmm. photography. Um, I was an early adopter on Instagram. Um, that all happened uh, around about the time when we had our little uh, bubs, Abigail, our one child. Uh, and I was stay at home. Someone's at the door. You, keep, you continue. You continue to tell that story. I'm just going to check. The back. <laughs> Who's here? Keep going. I'll hold the court, apparently. So um, I was a stay at home dad for our daughter Abigail. Uh, while I was a stay-at-home dad for her, um, I would just mess around with editing photos. So I would take my landscape shots, uh, edit away and start messing with them. Uh, because of Instagram, I uh, found a whole bunch of uh, digital artists and graphic artists um, that I'd follow and just started experimenting with apps and making things kind of look different so taking my normal landscape photography and turning it into something that's otherworldly which is what you're seeing here with the twisted landscapes that's how they were born this feels really weird i'm just going to check the chat for a little bit holding the fortnite legend so sorry about that there was a um post Posty was just like telling me his life story about how he delivered he delivered something to the wrong door, which I was like, dude, okay. Yeah, in the, kind of in the middle of something here. <laughs> I'm in the middle of something. I didn't want to be rude, but yes. Oh. Um, I didn't hear the end of what you just said. What was the last kind of? So, I heard the part about the, um, Abigail. Yep. So as uh, I was a stay-at-home dad for her, I'd spend a bit of time on Instagram. Um, following graphic artists and digital artists and all that kind of stuff and uh, started experimenting with manipulating photos. So that's where the Twisted Landscape uh, just got you. Starting to and is this, around I don't even know how you do this stuff. Like I'm, I am so, again, this, this ties into me just being not great with anything that's a bit like too techy. That's why a lot of my work is very much about the relationship with the person and getting the most in camera because I'm not great with any type of post stuff. So this is why stuff like what I see you, I'm just, this blows my mind. I'm like, this is genius. Like you are amazing. Uh, Welcome James to the chat as well. Nice to see you here. Um, I wouldn't have, it's all learned, you know, on the fly for me. So I wouldn't have said that I was, uh, I'm, for starters, I wouldn't have said I was a great photographer. Uh, and then I would, you know, I felt like I improved at that enough to have some results where I, I started selling some prints of my landscape photography. Mm -hmm. um, but then, yeah, I just, because of Instagram, I just decided to start experimenting with this stuff. And I went in not knowing anything and just messing around until I found things that were kind of, I sort of found my own voice, if you like, you know. Yeah, totally. And it really is. It's like so, so it's such a unique style that I've never seen before. Which I don't know. I don't know if you'd agree with that, but I've never seen it before. So it's um, that's really unusual. And I think especially in the world we we are in, like, and you're on Instagram, you see so much of the same stuff and people copying each other all the time. And yeah. have you seen it? Has anyone tried to copy you? Like, have you seen like anyone spring up that's attempted this style? Um. <laughs> not, I don't know. Not not a direct thing. I, I've seen I've seen people, um, I guess, put their own spin on it a little bit. Um, okay, so yeah, taken the concept and kind of built on it, which I always think that's kind of cool. Yeah, because every yeah. you know you, they've been inspired by your work and then they've taken it in a new direction or whatever. Yeah, 
Yeah, but not a. I don't. I, I haven't seen too much of that, uh, like a direct, you know, rip, if you like. I've only. Yeah. I've had people take my work and claim it as their own. That's, oh God. But um. How did you find out about that? What's uh, did you oh, had this? Was people tagging you? Because that happens a lot. Um, I've seen that happen to a lot of friends of mine. Actually, I don't think it's ever happened to me, but I've definitely seen it happen to other people that I, that I'm aware of. Yeah, I've been fortunate so far that I've. I've had people, you know, let me know that it's happening just so I could get them to take it down. So it's sort of does my head in that. Why someone would just blatantly do that? Well, I don't know what they get out of it. I have no idea what they get out of it. Like how you sleep at night. Like, yeah. 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 Um, like how, like to claim, I don't know. It's just, it, it, it's so far removed from how i operate in the yeah. world and i assume right. you're feeling the same way it's like it's <laughs> very much very zero much. vibe what up ash um chloe's asked how long does it take for you to do one of these i'm like super curious on that as well a twisted landscape yeah uh, it varies a little bit um because I've, i'll generally t because i know how the process works and what photos work best for it now um i'll i will take landscape photos with these in mind so there's right. that kind of process and i'm yep. still a bit of a stickler for i like the original photo even though the end product ends up nothing like it i still like the original photo to be something that i could share as it is as well got you yeah so yep, yep, yep. Still edit that photo in lightroom and and make it look something where i'm you know happy with it then i mess with it trash it completely turn it into a different world um and that <laughs> that takes you know it's um it's not a, it's, it's an experimenting thing so the the app that i use for it uh has got a whole heap of different controls to it and so i just mess with those until i find something that looks like someone could live in and then i put my little 3d figure in there using uh, adobe dimension which is another so there's a bit of a process i go through a, a few so there's a few different software tools that you yes. use to make the one Correct. creation essentially yeah yep. which is kind of cool i like that it's like so it's not just a it's a it's a very tricky process just to say okay you know for there's someone just to co copy without knowing that there's a bunch of steps yeah, yeah absolutely yeah there's definitely um, steps. and it ends up in photoshop too just to got tweak you. It. You know. Chloe said, um, wait, so the person is never in the picture. So that's someone that you've done, that man. The is little dude is a 3D the figure dude. that I uh, put into these worlds after the fact. What up, Rush? Nice to see you here. Yes, this is, um, so this is Nate Hill, uh, a lovely friend of mine from Melbourne as well. His work is phenomenal. Is the, the idea of having the man by himself in the shot where did that where did that concept originally come from yeah that's uh that came from me just wanting to the the twisted landscapes look very abstract without him and i'm okay with mm. that but i just like I, I liked the idea of there being um some scale to the image mm -hmm. and the little man offers that scale but also like a story like you are entering a, a different world like a different world, yeah. It's like the DMT world or something. It's just like yes, yes. <laughs> we've gone somewhere else, which something is super cool. Inception or whatever, but it's yeah. yeah. So it's just a, it's a, a story element, uh, you know. So something that you could view and then perhaps put yourself in the, the place of that little guy and you know put yourself into that world. So that's kind of where that came from. I love that. What up, Bill? Nice to see you here as well. Um, this, yeah, it's so phenomenal. And like every single piece is so unique, but obviously there's that, that theme, that overarching theme or style that ties it all together. So it's just like, when you see one, you know, it's yours, which I just think is, ah, oh, it's just such an amazing spot to reach as an artist that people would look at something and go, that's, that's a Nate Hills, you know, yeah. that's Nate Hills work, you know, yeah. that's, and, and something that obviously young people are striving to find their voice. If we go back to kind of where, the, you know, those early days to give advice to young people to find that style, do you just, was it just pure experimentation, just pure kind of trial and error? Yep, 
just trying things. So I, in the early-ish days of Instagram, I um, got to know a few app developers as well. So I'd end up um, beta testing apps, photo editing apps uh, as well. Yep, yep. And it was just, it was, it was literally all about just experimenting and seeing what I could do to a photo to make it interesting so that I could share it on Instagram. There was really no other ambition outside of, yep. of just, you know, being creative and having a creative outlet while I was, you know, being a stay-at-home dad. So there was just... Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, that was, the, uh, that was the end game, I thought, at the time. And at the time. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then, which I, I mean, I kind of love that too. Like, I feel like there's so much about photography and the business and the game that we're in that's always about, you know, the, the, the highest of ambitions. Like, you should be doing this full time and you should be working with all of the best clients and the best, you know, that's, that's always the goal. And there's all of this strategy that needs to be put in place. But it's really interesting because a lot of the people that I know that have made like that have, uh, have become quite successful finding their own way they've kind of fell into it there's been not that much strategy yeah <laughs> they've just kind of you know plotted their way through and found something that's landed eventually yeah yeah i think that's totally a fair call i think that for me the strategy came once i saw that there was potential for something and then you start ticking over about you know, oh, maybe I could do something here and I could take this somewhere that's kind of cool. But, um, yeah, as a starting point, it was definitely mm. just more about being creative and uh, you know, having an outlet and doing something. Like, I, I just, this is sort of the sort of stuff that I would do to relax is... You know, oh, my God. Like, this is, this is what I... Yeah, it's so hard to explain to people that don't do something creative full time, but it's fun. Like yep. when you're really doing, like it's it's like I would choose to do this even if I wasn't being paid. Yep. Like that's how much I enjoy my quote unquote job. Yep. So if you can find something like that, like it, that's literally living the dream. Like there's, I don't think there's anything greater than creating something for fun and then people find value in what you're doing. That's hundred percent. Could not agree more. Absolutely. Absolutely phenomenal. All right, we're going to go back to the gallery. Yeah. And let me pull up. So that's Twisted Landscapes. I want to go back to... So let's maybe... Oh, Digital Landscapes is it. We'll, we'll go into this one here. So I've got one of the black and white lines. You do. Ones. So we'll show this again, another... It's so interesting because like the, the two series are standalone, obviously, and quite different. But they're still so you. <laughs> it's like, yes. if I see one or the other, you know, I'm still relating this stuff. And maybe it's because of the little man in there. And it's, I don't know. There's something that you've embedded into our psychology. <laughs> when we see this work, we know that it's one of yours, which I think is genius. Uh, so tell us about this series. Wait, wait, how did this... And another, and it's another series born out of experimenting with apps and the like. Um, believe it or not, uh, all of these start out as photos as well. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. This is cool to find out. Yeah. So there's about probably 99% of the things that I do start out as photos. Um, very rarely will I um, create anything that's just legit... Photoshop and you know, uh, you know, just graphics, if you like. But um, I have so many questions. Like, I mean, yeah, ha like how, why, <laughs> what, like, not even why, because what I mean, the why is this result of this, but it's just I, I have no idea how you've done this. <laughs> it's just blowing my mind. It's so cool. Yeah, it's apps. You know, it's uh, it was all born out of. Uh, just experimenting on uh, iPhone and iPad. Now I've got an iPad Pro um, apps. And the um, a, a bunch of years back, the resolution wasn't awesome um, in, in doing things in apps. So what I'd find is I'd have to do things in apps and then export them to Photoshop, which I still do. I like to finish yeah. everything that I do in Photoshop. But um, now nowadays, photo editing apps are stupid good, like as far as... You know how you can output high-res stuff 
Um, it's mm. it's really good. There's a little bit, I think probably years back again, there was a bit of a stigma to doing just iPhone art, you know, or iPhone. Totally. Even just iPhone photography and videography, yeah. that's really changed in the last couple of years. Yeah. Like it's really become quite accepted and a for, you know, a lot of people are paid. I remember there was a photographer that came out to Australia in must have been 2012, and I actually can't remember his name, which is really, it's going to really annoy me, but he was the son of a really famous graffiti artist, and he came out here, and he got really big doing all of his client photography on his iPhone. He was like seven years ahead of the game, and I wish I could remember his name, and it might come to me, but um, he was doing big client work back then, the whole thing, shoot, edit on his phone, and... Oh. Just didn't give a shit that people, you know, didn't think he was a real photographer. He's just like, I don't care. I'm getting these massive clients and getting paid. So, like, yeah. whatever. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> getting the job done. And also, too, it looked, it was such high quality work. Like, you would never have guessed. It's And, and I think that's the thing. If you can produce something that yeah. nobody can tell, you know, you've done it on a phone. It's just another tool at the end of the day. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the way I saw it. And so, I started using these apps and then experimenting around and then I uh, started finding uh, bands uh, reaching out to me wanting album covers. So this is the more graphic stuff that I do is the stuff that sort of led me into doing album covers. I'll For, see if I can pull up a few of those examples because I think you've got a gallery of... I've got um, a gallery of album covers, which of I've done covers, over yeah. 100 of now, which I've... Oh, my yeah, God. Milestone I hit recently, which surprised me. That's... Phenomenal. Like, honestly, congratulations. That is so cool. All right, I'm going to start the, the album cover slideshow. Slide Here we yeah. go. I, I mean, it, it really does just lend itself to... Like, you can see... You can absolutely see that. Do you know what I mean? Like, these artists are so clever using your, your work for this stuff. It's so cool. Yeah, uh, it's cool. And I love it. I, I see it as a massive honour to be able to represent someone's uh, music... Uh, with my with oh. my heart, it's it's a massive honor, and I, I'll I, never get tired of it. I absolutely. I love feel it. exactly the same way. It is such a big honor. I really, really agree with you. Yeah, yeah, because your your um your image is attached to their art, so there, there's this really amazing kind of thing that you know you're doing something that represents another person's art and doing this together. I just I love it. I, and, I've and spoken about like, this before, I think, with specifically with the people like us that work with musicians because it's actually, it really lets you sit back and it, it removes your ego from the art because it does become part of someone else's image. Like their, their whole brand can be attached to your visual representation of them as an artist, which is so cool. Like it's really, like you said, it's such, a, it's such an honour. Yeah. And I love music so much. Like I, I listen to music every day. I've got mm. a, a ever-growing vinyl collection, and um, I just, uh, you know, to be a part of that. So to have art that's a cover for something that, you know, is out there in the world in that way, I just I love it. So yeah. So let's talk about the process then. When uh, when someone approaches you, they obviously like your work. Yep. Do how how does the creative process go? Do they pick something that they like and you you kind of do something similar do you completely rework um old stuff or do you sorry com uh, rework old stuff or completely you know do new stuff for them or does it kind of differ for each client it's different every time and it's a bit of all of the above uh, of what mm. you just said there so i've had people come to me and they've just loved an image of mine that i've already created and they want to license it so that happens um i have people that uh the one that just popped up I don't know if I'm delayed with what I'm seeing, but there's a band called Canyon who are from Melbourne. Oh, yeah. Um, I made a series of covers, five single covers for them, and they had liked a style of mine but wanted something that sort of spoke to the song titles. And so we worked together on, you know, putting that together. So they were my concepts and styles, but uh, the band had input in that, which I really enjoy because it's going to be mm. something that represents them. So I... I I, I like the band being involved um, and, you know, working together with a band. Sometimes that doesn't always work awesome, but, you know, it's... <laughs> yes, I can, uh, yep, yep. Part of the job. It's all yes. Right. I've gotten better at knowing... Dealing with personalities, it is, is what it yeah. is that, that's called. <laughs> yeah, exactly, absolutely. And I've improved 
the longer I've gone into this, I've improved at knowing how to manage what I do and what I bring to the table and be able to make sure that there's a quality that I want my name attached to that is maintained through the process. And that can be a little bit tricky, just knowing how to work that through with people if they've got yeah. ideas. Yep, totally. That's that's another part of the, I guess, the business aspect when you're dealing with clients that is a tricky thing to teach, really. Um, yeah. it just It's often just uh, experience and yeah. sometimes getting a bit burned and going oh shit that maybe that didn't go that well <laughs> maybe next time i can do it a bit differently or speaking to other people in similar situations but yeah that's um i think that's something that a lot of us can relate to is that just dealing with tricky clients for sure yeah yeah and just you just got to be a good you know you just got to be a good person be, be good about it and, you know no yes the chat to people and, and, Yeah, I think how I've always, I try to make sure that um, you're trying to make the client happy at the end of the day without compromising too much of your integrity, um, artistic integrity. So it's just trying to often find a balance, a happy medium and making sure and, and explaining if, you know, the demands are completely unrealistic then just explaining kind of why or and, and, and then finding a med- you know, a medium, like a happy medium. Absolutely. A middle ground, say, I can't actually do that, but I can do this, for example, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, so these, be- these are so fantastic, by the way. I just, I'm loving looking at the the wide variety of your work. It's really phenomenal. Yeah, it's, a little, it's pretty eclectic. Uh, I've, I've sort of narrowed it a little bit as the years have gone on into the two distinct styles that you were, mm. we were talking about, but... Um, mm. Yeah, uh, early on I was just doing whatever and not caring about what I put out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, that's how we all started. Yeah, I isn't definitely it? cared, but um, yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't matter if it was a billion different styles. Yeah, I think we all start like that. It's it's so interesting to see, you know, looking at your early work or some of the clients that you would work for originally, and you're just like, that's not my vibe at all. But you just do whatever you can at the start, yeah. you know, work that's... with whoever will work with you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's get into the dirty word that uh, we were talking about before. Yeah. Let's so uh, let's let's pre- pretend, and I'm assuming there'll be a bunch of people that don't know what NFTs are. Let's describe what NFTs are. Yep. And then potentially we'll go into how you're making this work for you, and then we can talk about maybe where it might go in the future. Yeah. Sure. All right. So an NFT stands for non fungible token. Uh, and it is all attached to cryptocurrency. Uh, so it's attached to a blockchain. Uh, let me think of the best way. What I've been generally telling people when they, they want to know what they get when they, they buy something from me is that you are purchasing a, a token, which is effectively, well, so you say you, you're purchasing an image of mine. You're effectively purchasing a token where that image is like the cover for it and the token is like its own currency. So you're investing in me as an artist and hoping and trusting that my artwork will either hold or gain value. So you're trusting that the artist that you're investing in is um, someone that's going to continue working in in the field, continue producing high quality art, continue to sort of uh provide value to the art world so that maintains the value or increases the value of your artwork so that's what you're getting when you buy uh, an nft off me you uh, you'll be getting that image which is a digital image you don't hold the rights to the uh, use of the image so you just own a token which is a unique token attached to that image that kind of makes ah that's really interesting yes because I had thought that the images were potentially like one-offs that they owned, but you're right. saying it's a token of that image and you can still use it for other things potentially? Yes, you can. So you can't re-mint it. So the token is unique. So you once you've minted that image and it's got its token attached to it, you can't re-mint it. That's very much frowned upon and will, you know, would pretty much get you black banned from any site is if you do that on multiple sites 
Um, mm -hmm. But the image um, itself, so say you've bought a twisted landscape of mine, I could still sell prints of that twisted landscape. Um, I don't do that generally, me personally. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I sort of come at from the uh, the perspective of if someone's spending a, a sizable amount of money on a piece of mine, I'm going to leave it as a unique piece for them and not have yeah, it. Yeah, so like, so it does feel more like ownership in that in that situation because that's how I would feel comfortable with it too. I think is that that person owns you know, like they've literally bought a, a, a piece of art that they own and it's a yep. one-off and there's a, there's a value attached to that. Yep. Like if you could own the Mona Lisa, yep. there's one Mona Lisa and you own that and there's value attached to that. That's how I've always seen it. So yep. that makes more sense to me, I guess. Yeah. Um, Chloe's has said, so people are buying shares in you. I saw that. I, that's spot on. That's effectively yeah. what you're doing. Yep. Is you're, you're investing in the artist and hoping... You know, it's a gamble still, but you're hoping that that artist will continue on, perhaps even, you know, if they become famous, then your, you know, your token that you hold increases in value and, you know, so on. Yeah. And have you heard about the, um, have you heard about BitClout? Yes. Because in that, it kind of, when that was explained to me or when I was listening to BitClout, that's a similar kind of a similar thing in that you can invest in people yeah. and hope that they you know yeah. their value is going to increase because they get famous or whatever yeah. i did see like it, it made me a little bit concerned at going down that path just in the the world that we live in so say you get really famous and all these people are invested in BitCloud, and then all of a sudden tweets you know, resurfaced of stuff that you said when you were a teenager and then you got cancelled yeah. and then your bit clout. And like, I just was imagining people's value, like they're attaching themselves to that value and that just being a really bad space for artists to get into from a mental health perspective, like attaching value to how much people yeah. are investing in something. So I, it, I can see why, I like, I like creative ways of artists making money yeah. especially in today's age because it's so hard for artists to make money. So anytime I see, you know, like I love Patreon, I love those things where people can invest in creators because we give so much of our time and our art away for free. Yeah. So I like that, you know, people are thinking about different ways to, to make money. But then sometimes I think, oh my God, like the mental health space for artists is already so, you know, as it is, like, are we getting into it even worse? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't space. know how I feel about BitClout itself because that is a different thing in that it's mm. effectively like its own cryptocurrency. Yeah, yeah. So that that one wasn't something that I dived into and I don't think I will, but yeah. uh, it is it is interesting. But it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. Effectively, when you buy, you're buying an NFT off an artist, you are investing in them in a similar fashion but at least when you buy an nft you actually have a token you get an artwork that you can display online that there is something more tangible i think about that if that makes sense totally welcome figgy to the crew sorry my um alerts are being super weird today but <laughs> thanks for joining um I know we've got a lot of new viewers today. If you're watching uh, the content that we've got on this channel today, um, this is a photography stream. I know it's very unusual to see a photography stream, stream on Twitch, but we uh, I stream here three times a week. There's a photography team as well. So there's a whole corner of Twitch with uh, lots of other uh, photography creators as well. So um, please follow myself, follow some of the other creators. If you're interested at all in this topic, um, we like to do things, all things photography over here. So just wanted to mention that, um, Ash said, thank you so much for a simple explanation of NFTs. It's still like, like I kind of get it, but I don't, do you know what I mean? Like I think once, I think if I went through the process of minting and like, it would actually like your brain would click, you'd be like, ah, oh, okay. Because yeah. I haven't done that. Like, I think it's still a tiny bit confusing, but, um, I can, I mean, I see for you, this is just, I mean, it's like this space was built for you yeah. like where people like you do you yeah. know what i mean like it makes so much sense absolutely and you're not the first person that said that to me i feel like i was preparing my whole time that i was on instagram and making digital art was preparing me for this space 
Like, which is so because this is the bit that I've, I I just don't see how it applies to myself and my art at the moment. Even though people have tried to tell me stuff, and I'm like, especially because I work with artists. Yeah. So it's like there's a whole another person. There's a whole lot of ethics that are attached to my, to me doing that. That is way outside just my own art. So there's a, a lot of other things, and you know, there's there's different people that have tossed up different ideas, but it's it's complicated. So yeah, um, complicated. There's. Have you heard of a platform called Foundation? I have, yes. I've seen okay. people tweet about it. Yeah, Foundation is um, the NFT platform that's probably most photography friendly at the moment. They've just implemented a new thing um, called Splits where you can um, mint a piece and have a number of different owners of the piece, the original piece. So say you're, you put up a shot of Rule you can have a split where you and Rule get a certain percentage of whatever the sale price is and it just automatically goes to whoever. So similar to uh, publishing rights for music in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and that that makes sense. It's like you'd have to do something like that. Because I I saw a conversation on Clubhouse that was talking about um, and and, and Val, uh, it was a, a valid remark was talking about if a photographer sells an nft and there's a whole team attached to that makeup artist stylist or you know yep what do they get yeah and i was like oh my god like people haven't even thought yes the photographer owns copyright yeah and they were selling usage to that point but this is taking it to a whole different level and this will completely change i think the way that contracts are forming and uh, it, there's a whole space that people haven't thought about yet so Absolutely. it's obviously very complex and very new and um bill said i see them as having interesting value for artists being able to manage greater control of rights to their work i completely agree with that i think that's where it's most exciting for me yep. um as someone whose work is stolen uh pretty much 50 million times a day Oh, man. And reproduced and yeah, sold on T-shirts and no one cares and you know, yeah. Um, yeah, that that sort of thing appeals to me, but I still don't know yeah how it's applicable. But yeah, like I said, for you, it's so freaking awesome. Can we talk about? I mean, you don't obviously have to be specific, but like mm-hmm. financially, you were saying to me, this has been the best thing that you've done, <laughs> kind oh, of by a country mile i can't even explain how much so so over the last six months i've earned more than i could have in years beforehand like it's been extraordinary for me and i've been very fortunate i would say that so i got into the space what is considered early um i minted my first piece in um it was either late september or early november last year and um it was still very underground then. Like if you had have said NFT to someone in November last year, they probably would have looked at you a little strange. But now people at least know what an NFT or have heard. The well, term. they've heard it. Yeah, yeah, they've heard the term. Yeah. yeah. Um, so because I got in early and the manner in which I got in uh, was through uh, a guy who is pretty big in the space. Um, it's a DJ from America who goes by the name of Blau, Justin Blau. And because he introduced me to the space and bought my first piece, it sort of gave me instant credibility, which was uh, just So it's like in the hip hop world, it's like having that cosign. Once you've got that cosign. 100%. That real, yeah. So I love that. I love that. And oh, what a legend. What a legend yeah. that he did that. Oh, it was amazing. Like, and I, this is a guy, he just followed me on Instagram before, before this um, and liked my art. So... Uh, we, we struck up a conversation and when I saw him posting about NFTs, I just asked some questions and um, he, did, he didn't have to do that. You know, he lives on the other side of the world. I don't know him personally, but he, he really looked after me and, and got me started in the space and I'll, I'll be forever grateful because it really set me off. Uh, I love it, hearing that story so much because like, you know, there could be, he could be really like, um, gatekeeping do you know yep. what i mean like want yep. that space for himself and yep. just be like no i'm not you know because clearly this is something that you're going to do well at like but he's got he's obviously noticed that and said i can help this person i just think that's so cool like 
tell him I said he's a, I don't know him at all, but tell him I said he's a legend, and yeah. I just I just uh, love that story. I think I that's so him, cool. I tell him quite regularly he's a legend. <laughs> so from that point onwards, though, now I, I've uh, brought a bunch of people into the space, and I feel like it's my duty almost to to do the same thing. So there's that pay it forward aspect that I'm I really uh, I hold dearly and want to make sure that I maintain kind of you know doing that for other artists as well so that's why i, I love, love that so much stuff. yeah yeah and i really appreciate you being here and explaining it to people that haven't heard about it as well so that you know could spark some interest today and somebody be earning all of this money through nfts which is super exciting um if you've got any questions as well please uh, feel free to pop them in the chat um, about nfts or about Nate's um, background or anything like that. Uh, where do you think the future is? Like, do you think, like Jay mentioned before, he feels like it's a bit of a bubble? Do you feel that way? And, you know, it's exciting to be involved in it or do you see a long-term kind of future? It's, it's a really tricky one. I, I think that there already has been a bubble that's slightly popped with it, uh, just in that there was a massive interest in it, uh, sort of... Uh, my, uh, sorry, March, April. That mm. was when it really, really, mm. really peaked. Um, and there were so many sales and it was like really wild uh, then. And I, I, I sort of was fortunate enough to be on some of the major platforms and have some drops during that time, which just was unbelievable. Um, timing, the timing. <laughs> timing could not have been better if I had a Back to the Future machine. Like, honestly. Could oh, my not, God. Could not have timed it any better. And I feel so fortunate. <laughs> I don't – I keep saying fortunate and lucky, uh, and I, I genuinely do feel that. There is the work that's gone into it, and I still had to be there to be able to produce it and do it. But I do feel yeah. very lucky. There's plenty of other artists out there that, you know, just haven't been as – fortunate in that time yeah i know but you just like you know there's so much you, like you said there you felt like you were kind of working up to this point you you were at the right place at the right time which i guess is lucky but also there's all of those years yeah you know making this art and nobody knows who you are and building up your brand and or doing all this stuff in the background and this yes you're in a prime position then that to take advantage of something that happens yeah, yeah. Um, gotta be ready for it when the moment comes, gotta be ready, gotta be for, ready it. for it, and I definitely yeah. was, which is fortunate. Um, but what, yeah, having said that, uh, the um, the amount of the sales volume has dipped quite a lot. So from that sort of um, maybe February, March, April, it was really booming. Uh, it's dipped quite a lot now, so it's a lot harder to make sales consistently now. Mm -hmm. um, however, I do think that there is well, yeah. Personally, I think there is a future for NFTs and for artists in NFTs. I just think that it's going to be, there's a little bit less of a frenzy about it. So you've got to be a little bit more strategic about how you go about it and how you invest yourself and place yourself within the space, if that makes sense. That's exactly how I see it. So when I saw the frenzy in March and April and everyone was talking about it, I was like, I'm just going to go listen to a lot of the conversations because I think it's here to stay. Like, it makes sense to me. And I think, you know, same with crypto, same with all of that stuff. There's going to... When that real-world application starts yeah. to really cross over... Yeah, that's it. And people start seeing how it applies to their everyday life, that's when you're going to see it click. And you'll see stuff like this really click as well. So I'm kind of just like want it to be on my radar and you know yes i'm not an early adopter but be able to get in later on when i've really worked out what's the best way to utilize it or whatever um i, I definitely think it is here to stay i think it's inevitable that yeah it, it's going to be part of our lives um across the board i think yeah. well the technology behind it is so useful anyway so just yeah totally you know, uh, there's ledger of things on a blockchain and, and the way that NFTs work uh, and the way that you can write smart contracts. There, there's so much to it that I'm still a newbie about um, that you can dig into. And there are so many applications outside of just art. So art's been the thing that sort of brought it into everyone's consciousness and I, and that will remain and it will be remain as a, a potential source of income for artists. But I think it's something that you're going to have to be really smart about how you position yourself in it and what you do. So even I agree, yeah. So and just to be, yeah, like 
people have to be careful if you know how how they like you've just said that be smart with the, the way that you utilize it um that's why i think come in and mint like you know 50 things and expect them to just sell like it's that's not just that's not going to work especially if you don't have any profile because i've seen people do that i've definitely seen that and i'm just like I don't know how this is going to work. If like, yeah, you might get lucky and sell one piece or something. It makes sense for people that are established potentially. And it definitely makes sense for you, like with such a unique voice and people that would really gravitate towards this type of unique art. But if, I don't know, I've just, I mean, I see a lot of photographers. I'm like, eh, it's just a photo of a, it's a portrait of a person. Like, I don't, like I'm not really understanding the application here um but hey i could be wrong and i'm like there's no hate either i'm just like get yeah, money yeah. like let's go hey, good luck to you if you can earn money that way i am so i'm happy for people winning yeah. i'm absolutely here yep. for people winning yep. all about it totally all about agree. it totally agree yeah no awesome. so it's been good to me I, I i've been fortunate and now because you know people know that i've sold stuff uh, my work is a little bit more sought after so now my um, focus is doing things that are interesting and different. So my next mm -hmm. drop that I'm going to do is going to be something that I believe at this stage no one's done before. Oh, which is kind of, that's kind exciting. Of and exciting. It's still attached, that is. It's still attached to my style and what I do, but it's just the way I'm going to present it and the content of it is going to be different. So... Oh my god, I'm so excited. I just got butterflies thinking about what it's going to be. That's so exciting! I'm so happy for you. This is you. so dope. This it's is fun. like, honestly. It's, it's been amazing. So. I like seeing, when I was saying I like people, people winning, I absolutely do. But you know what's even better? When good people win. When good people win, it's just the best. It feels you right. Know? It feels right, doesn't it? It feels right. It does. It does. Oh, um. Anyway, this, let's, we've had you for an hour. Let's um, see if there's any last questions um, before I will let you go. Um, what are you, how are you finding, um, I guess, the aftermath of COVID? Uh, how's your business been overall? And are you kind of resurfacing? Oh, it's, it's so tricky for us because I feel like we're, we were just getting on our feet and then, you know, another lockdown. I was just saying to someone today, um, the lockdowns don't bother me that much now. Like, I don't get anxiety over the lockdowns. I'm just like, all right, I've got so much shit to do. I've got admin to do. It's fine. What's really frustrating is the ripple effect of my clients. Yeah. Is that they all, every single one of them, even if it's the shoot is after when we know that we're, they're locking down, they all postpone because yep. they're not mentally coping with the lockdown yep. and they're not prepared. So everyone's pushed everything back now. So all of my bookings for this month have gone to next month and there's no way, even with grants and stuff, I've gone for every grant and stuff, but there's no way to really financially recoup that stuff. And it's just like every time you restart again. Yeah, it's horrible. It's, it's such a blow. And like, I know we're so lucky in Australia. I know all of that. And I really, I never like to, I don't want to feel like, appear that I'm not grateful for our situation. Yeah. Oh, but really. You're, you're still confronted with your own reality though, aren't you? And, and the reality yes. is that, you know, your source of income relies on being out there and with clients. And that's, yes. you know, that's taken away from you. Yeah. So. Yes. And I've come to terms with the, you know, one of my major source of income being touring, being completely taken away. So, I've, you know, I've had to adapt and, and the press shot stuff came back and obviously Twitch has been really great. Yeah. Um, but it's it's tricky every time you're having to restart. What up, Kiki? Nice to see you. It is. It's really cool. I've been fortunate um, because my um, business now has really converted from photography to digital art and I do that from home anyway and I can continue to create. My clients hit me up through Instagram, so it doesn't matter where in yeah. the world they are. So I've been I've been super fortunate. I, I haven't had a drop off of work at all, which I, I you know, I feel really, really fortunate uh, for that fact. So I, I feel hugely for people who, who have, you know, I've got friends that own businesses that are really been hit hard mm -hmm. got a lot of photographer friends who went yeah. from having heaps of bookings to zero income so i i feel fortunate and i know you know there are plenty of people that haven't had it so lucky 
Totally. Yeah, I feel that. Um, hello, I'm Elaine. That's such a great question. It's something that I have definitely done some reading in the space. I'd love to get your perspective. It says, this has been really interesting. Do people ask or comment much about the environmental stuff behind NFT? What do you say to, this people, to these people? Great question. I yep, love that. Great question. It does come up a lot. Um, mm. There is heaps um, going on now in the space to try and correct. So yes, there's a lot of energy usage with NFTs. It is comparable though to businesses that have emails going out all the time. So I think some of the, the stuff that's come up has been beaten out of proportion a little bit as far as the environmental impact with NFTs. That's not to say that it's not something that should- An issue. Yeah, it's definitely there. Yeah. Something there. What I would say though now, um, over the last three or four months, I think at least, uh, a lot of the major platforms that sell NFTs are offsetting um, their energy usage. So a lot more has gone into that. There's also platforms like I'm on a platform now, which uh, I can't pronounce the name of it properly because it's a Latin word, but it's, it's um, <laughs> his name is Hen. Um, and it's a green platform. So there is um, very minimal impact, minimal to no impact uh, through that particular um, blockchain and network. So there's de it's definitely an issue and it's one that I think the space is aware of and is uh, has begun to counter, if that makes sense. Yes, and all of the reading that I've done in the space is pretty much spot on to what you've said. It's been a little bit kind of blown out of proportion and they are trying a lot to rectify that particular issue. Uh, what up, Alex? Nice to see you here. Um, Bill said some of it depends on the blockchain too, doesn't it? As in Bitcoin's power usage is largely mining, I think, but um, Ethereum isn't at, at all bad. I, that's also my understanding. So, yeah, um, that's my understanding. It's... It's, you know, obviously a very new space and I think it's only going to kind of get better um, if people are, again, if it's, if we get to the point where it's like full scale, um, you know, world adoption of, you know, utilizing this in, in everyday sort of thing, it, there's going to be so many eyes on yeah. that sort of thing. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's super exciting. This one here, can I just tell you, I've played it like three times now, is really therapeutic. There's something, there's something just really fulfilling about this one. I just, it just goes into the little hole. I'm delayed on my, <laughs> I think on my, uh, on my phone. Uh, it's, it's um, Awakener. I oh, think it's actually, I don't have the sound on it, but yeah, um, no, just no. visually how it just goes in and out. It's, yeah. so... it's, it's probably, and I think I even write it in the caption on Insta. It's probably my favorite piece I've ever made, that one. Oh, it's just, there's something about the, just it just fulfills you at the end there just really you're like yes <laughs> i would like to I, I won't i haven't played the actually maybe i can turn the turn my music down and put this on hang on let's yep. pause soy let's pause soy and we'll put the sound on the sound we go. i'm gonna shout out another uh... that's probably really loud isn't it oh my god how do i turn the sound i don't know how to make that softer on oh, my desktop there we go can I shout mm -hmm. out the uh, guy that made the music on this? Yes, please. His name is, his artist name is Wax Wayne. And I've known Wax him. Wax Wayne? Uh, yep. And he's an, a big Twitch user, by the way. He's got quite a huge following on Twitch. Awesome. Uh, and he uh, and I did a collaboration drop where I did art for um, his album that he released. And this is the album cover. And so he, he made this. I've done a few album covers and single covers for him now, and I'm a huge fan of his music. So if anyone... Well, it's getting really loud. <laughs> it does. It ramps up this one. It ramps up. So good. I love it. Yeah, so I love that. Wax Wayne, uh, he's uh, an artist to go and check out. If you like Radiohead, you'll love Wax Wayne. Very, very cool. Very ominous. Uh, hello, hello. I'm Elaine. Just asked for a Twitch handle. Um, oh, there you go. Bill's just found it. He said he shot him twice at TwitchCon. Oh, cool. Big burly man with a big uh, golden voice. Uh, yeah. Min said, I'm sure we've talked about this, but was wondering what software do we use? Um, he was being quite elusive about that, and I didn't know if that was for a reason. I didn't want to <laughs> pry, but I don't know if you want to drop a couple of names or if you want to keep it mysterious. It's I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it a little bit mysterious. I use the, <laughs> the entire Adobe suite these days. Um, so I, I 
do a lot of work in Photoshop. I do. Uh, I use a program called Adobe Dimension, which is one that you can uh, use 3D elements in. Um, cool. And I use some iOS apps. I'll <laughs> I love it. I love the mystery. That's so funny. So great. I get Uh, asked a lot on Instagram about how I make certain elements of my work. And I used to um, put up some tutorials and bits and pieces. I've become a little bit more protective of it since I've had some stuff ripped of mine. uh, I understand. And and because I've got my own kind of look going, I've sort of just become a little bit more protective of that um i totally totally understand what up jimbo with the seven month subby let's go (laughs) nate hill man of completely reasonable mystery i love it i think completely (laughs) reasonable as well i think um and also too like uh uh, you know i it's interesting because now at these days i'm very much an open book obviously people are aware I've just released a course which has got just a brain dump of everything that I think that I know yeah. um, because also too like the, the way that I think of it is you can tell everybody everything but there's still an element of they've got to go do so yeah. much other stuff themselves That's like, very it's true. so That's hard to do yeah. what we do so yeah. um, but I think it's completely different because mine is more mine's more like the pathways that people don't think about in terms of like networking and relationships. And because a lot of people think there's a pathway that I actually think is a bit of a dead end, but this is very practical. Mine's less tech basically is what I'm saying. Actually, it's, there's yeah. really no tech at all. Um, it's more tips and secrets rather than how you physically make something. And I can understand there being like, this is very, very unique art that you don't want a million other people doing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very specific to you and your voice and it took you a long time to get there. So Yeah, there's an element of that. I do love sharing it and if you had have followed me on Insta <clears throat> three or four years ago, I would semi regularly put up tutorials in my stories about how I do certain things. So the information was out there and around. Uh, <laughs> I've become a little tiny bit more guarded about it now. I uh, just quickly, if we've got time, uh, that yeah, that, we we have all the time in the world. You can be here for as long as you want to be. <laughs> we can just chat. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> the um, the guarded thing came from um, uh, an artist I've been following for a long time on Instagram. <clears throat> he developed his own style to do with text, text based stuff, um, and it was it, it exploded his Instagram. And he, um, you know, had a huge account then and had heaps of people wanting him for client work. And then he shared um, his process, and then everyone was doing the exact same thing as him, and mm. like knocking it off, like completely, like you couldn't tell whose was his and oh. you know, whose was someone else. And then they started; other people started getting clients that probably, you know, should have been him. Got to hear, started, yeah. Other people started claiming that they came up with it first, and it became this real big mess of a thing that and i think it really from the outside looking in because i don't know him personally uh i think it really messed him up the the original artist uh it really i can see that happening yeah Uh, and so i could look i've had i've had that happen to me once with a um I'll be very vague with the details, but with a major project that i was doing and someone um basically took the exact same concept and shot with the exact same artists and, and, uh, you know, started commodifying. It was it. And it really, really bothered me. Like it, and you know, I don't own, I don't own the artist. I don't own the concept and any, but it was just like, you know, it's a yeah. person that lives in your city, working with the same people, yeah. knows you personally. It just felt so yuck. And it really, really bothered me. And the only way I was able to deal with it was to completely block that person. And I don't, I don't usually block people. It's actually not something that I like to do. Um, I haven't had many super negative experiences with people in my life, but I had to block this person, just not see it, Yeah. which is really hard when you yeah. live in such a, you know, you're in this town, everybody knows each other, everybody's friends with each other, everybody talks and like, 
it was just re- and, and so I can't even imagine on a scale that big you know yeah. where you know people are starting to get work from something that you create and, and you know it's it obviously there's questions there of you know it's art and yeah do you own the yeah. ideas once they're out there and all, all of that sort of stuff? I get it. Like, it's complex, but it still feels shit. Like, you can still just admit it feels shit. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like, we're That's humans. Always... Artists are sensitive people. Like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And it's always the question. That, that was always the thing that people brought up is you don't own that style, but, like, you know, if it's something that you've put a, heaps and heaps yes. of years into developing and it was a unique voice... It's, yes, that's a that's, that's a, the thing that bothered me the most is that it was a a concept that the person took and commodified with a really big brand, yeah. and I was just like, and, and and you know we'd we'd kept it away from that for a reason, yeah, because of integrity. There's a whole reason that we didn't do that, but it just felt yeah gross it was just like oh god and you know people that i would speak to would be like you know they would see it and be like are you aware this person's doing this and i'm like how can i not be aware it's all of the same people (laughs) yeah of course i'm aware and then they're like oh you know everyone knows that you started it and blah 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 and i'm like yeah but it still feels shit it just feels gross you know yeah um yeah so, uh, Kiki said, it's hard to sometimes because it's like how do folks have similar ideas and have no contact with each other? That's, I mean, you know, sometimes um, people do have the exact same, same idea and they're like completely different. They're in the other side of the world and they've never had any. And that's just like a coincidence yeah. or whatever. Yeah. We're talking about very specific examples where that's yes. like not the case. Yeah, absolutely. Like, no, there's there's going to be stuff where you like where you are influenced as an artist from other stuff and that comes into your work. That's, that's, I think that's a little bit of a different thing than taking something that someone's developed uh, and that was a unique thing and then directly just taking it and owning it and then profiting from it and, you know, Ugh. that's that's the gross part, like, like you were saying. <laughs> there's, there's... It really does put a gross spin on it. Um, Jimbo's just said happens all the time in stand up. Yes, that's something that I've he- definitely heard of like joke stealing and yeah, yeah that. Oh, God. I don't know. So how do you live with yourself when you've heard something, heard a joke, yeah. and then you're like, oh, I'm going to take that? And I don't know. I just feel very gross about that. Yep, same. Um, Could, couldn't live with myself. No, so my thing now, Kiki. Sorry. Yes, oh, you go. No, you go. You go. Oh, so my thing now, when I get asked uh, how I do a specific technique, is I'll be vague like I was before with you. So <laughs> apologies. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but I I also like recommend to artists to try and find their own spin on it. Like try and find something and find your own voice rather than. It's cool that someone likes what I do and wants to be able to replicate it. I, I do see that as an honour that people want to yeah. be able to do something like I can do. But I think it's a greater victory if you can take an idea and make it your own. Like find something else. Find your own thing that then other people can bug you about. That <laughs> how do I do your thing? So yeah, absolutely. I think I mean everyone is influenced, uh, especially in art by that way it is about how you find your own spin on it for sure and um it's just that blatant copy i don't know um i don't know if you know uh do you know v- vicky vergara i don't know if she's a melbourne kind of portrait photographer no. um she's it she just posted the other day it was really hilarious that a photographer had ripped off her photos like she had them side by side yeah and then he the person had obviously taken the photograph as inspiration but then completely tried to copy it. So what the model was wearing, the background, the lighting and everything, but done it so bad. Oh. <laughs> I said to her, I go, it's like if, you know that website Wish? It's like if you like went to the, went to the <laughs> website Wish and ordered Vicky Pappas Vergara and that's what you got delivered. This is like budget version and just like the worst, the worst ripoff you've ever seen. It was, oh my God, it was so funny. Um, Kiki said, I saw this documentary about a band before. They were interviewing people on the street if they'd heard the band before. This one guy was like, I don't listen to anyone else's music because I make music. 
to basically have to true ownership of his idea. Ah, oh, I say so. He's not in. He doesn't listen to any music, so he's not influenced by anyone. Okay. That's so interesting because you definitely hear that with musicians, don't you? You, he- yeah. you often hear their influences. Oh, absolutely. And um, quite often, people will wear it as a badge. Really. Yeah, like we, you know, we sound like whatever yeah. Black Sabbath or whatever. Um, Kiki said, "My friend." <laughs> My friend was in a music, uh, a comedy show, and an, this artist did her joke right before her. Oh my god! Why? That's like DJs. You know, have you ever heard the story about this? Happens in hip hop sometimes. There'll be like a really famous hip hop DJ, and they'll give a list of songs that the people before them can't play because it's like you cannot <laughs> play. It's yeah. like a no no about DJs playing a song before like the DJ. You know, like if yeah. whoever I don't know, Jazzy Jeffs or whatever, he's playing. He's, you can't play this song before Jazzy Jeff because Jazzy Jeff is going to play it or whatever. But there's, then there's, there's stories about someone that does and then the person gets really upset and I don't know. It's like I find that shit hilarious. Like, that is so hilarious. Funny. But ripping someone's original joke just before they're going to say it. Wow. Come. That's so whack. Um, Jim said sometimes it's totally an accident. Uh, you hear someone do it once and you forget that they did and it feels like you came up with it. That's interesting. Yeah. Just like, oh, I forgot that. I, I must have thought. I must have thought of it in a dream. <laughs> I'm so brilliant. <laughs> um, uh, Min said there's a silver lining, though, because there's a difference between copying and deriving inspiration from it. I think this is where I see the difference. The artist has to know, like the person that's doing the copying has to know and that must eat them up inside. This is how I feel about it. It has to eat them up inside. The problem is a lot of other people don't know and they'll often get, you know, rewarded or work and stuff from it. That's what's really frustrating. But then I think the silver lining is they know, they fucking know that they stole that. They know that's not their original idea and they're really insecure about it and they're probably not very happy in their life. So <laughs> yeah. I'd like to think that you're absolutely spot on there. <laughs> So, I mean, the, you, you, to even do it at the start, yeah. you have to be so insecure and ha- ha- because how do you, like you said, live with yourself, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the wish challenge. We should do that. We should do that as a challenge one week, Min. Like you get an ins- inspiring shot, like it's an inspiration shot, and then you've got to do it really bad. Like who can do the worst <laughs> rip off? <laughs> rip off our favourite inspiration and make it terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's like the photography equip, uh, equivalent of like an ugly sweater. It's so funny. I love that. We should make that our challenge one one week. That is so funny. Oh my god, uh, that happens in stand up. Le- I see it at least once a month. Holy shit, that's so funny. A DJ I used to work with told me a story about that where he had, some beef between two de- DJs led the DJ to replicate the preceding DJ's signature, <laughs> whatever, with one hand while taking his clothes off and putting them back on. That's fucking <laughs> hilarious. I can totally see that with DJs, like just having beef and... Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's so funny. <laughs> um, and so... I kind of really want to know about this new thing that you're doing. Can you give us any hints about where you, without giving away too much? Um, <laughs> you're like, what can I say? What can I say? Uh, um, no, I can't say much because the the aspect of it that's <clears throat> going to make it different. Uh, and what I am still hoping is that it hasn't been done before uh, is is the only interesting part of it. <laughs> Fair that. enough. So it's it's a difficult one to give away too much. I will say though that I'm working more on. I don't know if you saw it. I, I as part of one of my major drops I did. I had a piece that had an animation to it, and I made the made physical prints of it, and the physical prints could be uh, triggered and. Uh, augmented reality so you could look at the print and it would come alive what what so that's something else. my brain has just exploded yeah. so so you could put wait okay how <laughs> so you could put this print up on, on on your wall okay look at it through my it. little chimp brain was like it, you could see it it was like what the little mice were running inside my head yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, you get the print through an app and the app triggers the animation and the music. So you, the print comes alive oh, through the app. Wow, that's so cool. So that's, I love that you just thought of that. Well, it's like not that's... like I didn't think of it, but it's something that I've been able to, you know. Well, you thought of doing it and applying it to your work. There you go. Yes, yes I did that. Not that you thought of the augmented reality, but no. it was, um, I've forgotten the photographer's name. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot his name. He sent me his, he did a, like a, a little magazine thing. Yep. But it was all done in 3D. So you got like 3D glasses and stuff. Uh, well, I can't remember his name. He's a music photographer. Lewis yes, Lewis. Yes. Yeah. And he sent me, and I was like, this it's, is so yeah. sick. I've yeah. actually, you know what? I actually haven't um, messaged him to say it's so dope. Like such a great idea. The photos right. really come to life. And I'm like, yeah. How has nobody thought of this before? Yeah. This is so amazing. One second, because I reckon I've got it here. Oh, oh, my God, yes. Yes, that's it. And you look at it, and it just looks like a little photography zine, you yeah. know? Um, and then you open it, and you get the little glasses. Glasses, yeah. And they, they're unbelievable. It's really good. It's really, it's cool. really good. It really takes the photos to the next level it is it's really phenomenal and i do like shout out to lewis and i will um actually message him oh I, it just reminded me because it's it's so 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 dope there you go i'm assuming you can probably still purchase it as well but follow lewis nixon on instagram and um yep maybe i can actually maybe i can find his i might be able to find it and give him stand a shout up, out stand up dude as well lewis he's a great guy let's give him a little shout out in the chat give him there a we go shout. that's him Oh my God, he's only got seven, he's only got 751 followers. Guys, can we get him some more followers? He is his Instagram. Yeah. It's such a unique idea. Like yeah. I just was like, oh it's my so God, fun. people are so talented. Um, Min's so cool. got a really great quest and I'd really like to know this too. If you'd like, to, I don't know if you want to share or not, but he would like to understand if you take any psychedelics. I do not. I've never taken drugs or wow. smoked. Wow. You know, before I was saying to you, it looks like um, what I imagine the DMT world might look like. I'm saying that as someone who's never taken DMT. So people that have taken DMT are probably like, Michelle, it looks nothing like that. But um, in, in something in terms of um, an alternate reality. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at, at like a different dimension sort of thing. I'm super interested in that stuff. And we've often talked about it on the stream. Um uh, I don't do drugs. I am drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. That's funny, actually, because I have had numerous people tell me that my artwork totally, totally trips them out when they're on drugs. Like, you know. Yes, like, this is the thing. It absolutely would. There's actually, um, I don't know if you've, I, I would love to remember who this artist is, um, but he, and Joe Rogan's mentioned him before, but he's a guy that has, a, I think, a tumour on his pineal gland oh. and basically what they think is when you when you go to the dmt world there's um it's like it's released through the pineal gland and this is what you're seeing is visuals i'm just butchering this um <laughs> anyway right. but anyway uh he's got a tumor know, so. he's got a tumor on his pineal gland okay. so and he creates this art that people say when they go to the DMT world looks exactly like that dimension. Yeah, well. But he doesn't do that. He's just got a tumor. It's so trippy. It's like super, like, I just love hearing about that stuff. So, so yeah, I can totally see why people that would see your work and either assume you do a lot of psychedelics or when they're on psychedelics are like watch, are like looking at this stuff and just tripping out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's a question I get asked quite a bit, so it's an interesting one. Imagine if you did do psychedelics, where your brain would go, though. Maybe it's like... Maybe it would know. explode, though. Like, maybe because I've got this stuff in me as it is. Mm, maybe it'd be true. too much. I don't know. Like it would reverse it and yeah. go yeah. the other way. Yeah, I don't know. That's so true. <laughs> Nate's just on a different wavelength in his normal state. I mean, that's... That's the goal. That's pretty awesome. I love that. That's a great question, Vin. I love that. Is that a compliment? I think it's a compliment, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I have, I, I'm, 
I'm um, not adverse, to, you know, to talk talking about safe psychedelic uses for sure. I think there's, uh, especially now where they're really talking about the medicinal yep. uses of plant medicine and stuff like that. I'm really, really interested in that stuff. I think um, that's why they're here. This is, you know, specifically things like mushrooms and um, stuff that is, you know, naturally occurring yep. in the planet it's here for a reason and we're starting to find out you know the medicinal uses for them i'm really interested in that stuff so yeah. Yeah. we've spoken about that on the, the stream before um but it's just so interesting that it's like your brain goes to a place that other people need to yeah take psychedelics to get to a similar state it's very cool it's, it's an interesting thing for sure yeah, and yeah Bill's just said MDMA and, and ketamine are getting a lot of um, use for PTSD. PTSD and um, just general therapy as well, um, trauma therapy, um, lots, yeah, lots of different... It's, it's really interesting, actually. A lot of uh, yeah, depression and trauma. A lot of the um, clubhouse rooms that I like to sit in now are the doctors that are doing um, this type of research, um, specifically at an organisation called MAPS in America. Not so much in Australia. We're a bit slow on the uptake here but a lot of work in america which is really cool yeah right yeah so you know you never know you never get you on the uh the old mushies <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding this is cool this is the arise um slow field this is oh my god i don't even know how you do this stuff the animation stuff that's like you're taking it to a whole different realm like were you excited when you started to animate these pieces like they really came to life yeah, yes you can see you nodding <laughs> big time yeah yeah that was a that was a big uh, step for me uh just learning how to do that in a way that i felt like suited my my art because uh, it's generally it's pretty subtle animations the stuff that i do but mm. um i feel like it suits you know my artwork and it you know, just gives it another dimension as you say so yeah very very cool and want to dive into that some more definitely want to see where i can go with that and potentially take my um <clears throat> i guess my 2d uh style into a yes. 3D kind of world absolutely yeah um minda said have you considered going into the 3d programs yet uh, i'm assuming that's like next step yeah, probably next step. Oh, it's something I'm exploring because I want to be able to figure out how to do it so that it still maintains my kind of vibe and doesn't look like everyone else's 3D work. That's something yep. that I've enjoyed about my work is because I use photography as a major part of it, um, I, I can put my own stamp on that, whereas a lot of the 3D art that I see, and there's a lot of it in the NFT space, Tends, oh, I bet, yeah. Tends to look a bit samey. Um, mm. So that's something that I'll, I'm still, I'm just going to try and work out a way that I can do it in a Nate Hill kind of way. Gotcha. Yeah. Kiki said if the foreground was moving, I'd be on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, those black and white pieces, when you scroll up and down, they mess with people's eyes. So, yeah, they definitely do. Yeah, okay. and I love that. But I, I probably should... <laughs> leave a warning somewhere <laughs> like a, a weird trigger warning yeah yeah that's it might trigger i don't know epilepsy or something maybe i don't know has anyone said that has anyone oh. said if it's like yeah yeah, messes might with trigger, uh, yeah psychedelic attack you know? a dmt <laughs> episode <Yes. laughs> first they mess with your eyes then they mess with your lunch <laughs> <laughs> That is actually amazing. I love that so much. I like um, Who needs DMT when you have Nate Hill? Oh, uh, my God. That is the quote of the day. You should get that on T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be my new bio, apparently. NHT. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Just take all of these quotes. Seriously. Should They should be, you know how people, like, you go to their bio and it's just quotes like. Yeah. yeah. Who yeah. needs DMT when you have Nate Hill? That's freaking amazing, and like, it, honestly. I've, uh, I started the stream as a photographer and now I'm a drug. So it's, yeah, yeah. You, are, you literally are a drug. You're a new <laughs> molecule uh, and completely legal at the moment. They haven't, uh, they haven't caught up yet, so it's still Ooh. legal. Um, I love that you've put up my favourite live music photo that I've ever taken. Yes. 
I was just about to say, are you excited about shooting live? Have you shot any shows back yet? Uh, not for a long time. I shot some earlier uh, in the year when we were in between lockdowns. I shot Birds of Tokyo at um, the Sydney My Music Bowl. But, um, oh, that would have been beautiful. It was Birds at the the... Melbourne Symphony <gasps> Orchestra too. So. Oh, my God. I'm actually um, I'm not a massive fan of Birds of Tokyo, but I'm a massive fan of Carnival. I like the uh, just the harder version. <laughs> you are speaking my language. <laughs> oh, just the harder version yeah. of that. Yeah, it's... Um, it's I, I love it, but uh, I can imagine with the orchestra that would have been just stunning, like absolutely stunning. It was, it was stunning. Yeah, I've got some uh, gigs tentatively planned for next month, so I'm just keeping cool. my fingers crossed that they're going to go ahead and I'm going to be able to do it. Um, and I'm missing it hugely because that's something yes. that I just there's nothing like. I remember jazz. Uh, probably every gig photographer that ever speaks to you will say this, but there's nothing like being in the pit, shooting a live show, just with the adrenaline and the lights and the music. I just, I miss it so much. Absolutely. Uh, Yo, Reno. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining us. Um, did you always orientate towards black and white? And if so, why? That's a great question. Are you a bit of a fan? kind of like you make jazz you guys are kind of drawn to black and white stuff yeah, i am drawn to black and white um <laughs> uh i don't know if i have a solid set reasoning for it i think it's just an aesthetic thing for me that just works so especially yeah. with live music there's something classic about it yes yeah there, there's just yeah there's some um, i love i remember there was one tour of that um rule fans started making like memes about how a lot of rules live gig photography is actually it's not like all of it but there's i definitely lean towards black and white as well and they, I, I saw a meme once it was like something about like rules photographer could never and it was like a color <laughs> colored life which i actually thought was hilarious i actually wasn't i just thought it was so funny um and I, i'm similar like there's something really classic about black and white photography like you said with the light in the live realm and i think because i was really influenced by you know 90s hip-hop photography as well like a lot of that stuff is like black and white so i just there's an aesthetic to it that i yeah really love so um i've definitely in the last and i think probably from working with rule as well really really forced myself to work on my color stuff and just get a lot better at it because i i would naturally gravitate towards black and white um but yeah, I have an inclination as well, for yeah. sure. Just with, especially with live music, but like you can see with my digital landscapes that there's the black, the whole black and white vibe too. And I, I think there's something, uh, I, I like minimalistic art as well. So there's, there's something Same. about stripping things back to just that, you know, those. Same. It's so interesting too because it you can sometimes see stuff that's the opposite and get really like oh my god I should be doing stuff like that or whatever but then I'm always just drawn back to like simplicity yeah. connection with a person I don't know just like really stripping it back like that's my favorite yeah kind of forms of photography it's really strange yeah I'm with you and a little bit of it for me too when I started doing live music photography honestly is learning how to color correct and how to uh, that, that, I found that hard. I find that difficult to make a colour live music shot um, pop. Like some are going to work and some are not. Uh, but I, I found that more of a battle than just being able to find a feeling. Like, like... Yes. Because the, with the black and white stuff, it can be, um, the, stuff, the thing that makes it a really great live shot is literally contrast, light and dark. Versus when it's a color st color shot, like yeah. like Bill just said, purple lights. I actually don't mind purple. It's um blue. Yeah. It's the primary colors: blue, yeah. red, green. Oh, those really red. red. Purples. Yeah. I used to actually really love purples. I used to it used to be my thing. Actually, was like really working with purple. Some people hate purple, but um, I actually tend to quite like it. Red is the one that a lot of people really hate. But then you see people like, I know Ruby Bolland, she does reds brilliant, brilliantly. Um, Her colours, oh, she's... A great, Georgia, Georgia Griffiths, who, she yep. does greens really well. Like there's um people that do 
stuff really well because they've found a way. But yeah, it can be really tricky to color correct and get it right when it's all over the place. You're working with horrific spotlights or you know whatever happens to be at the venue that you're working with when you start doing the bigger shows oh my god that stuff is so easy (laughs) honestly like they're really easy to shoot yeah lighting in the bigger shows absolutely can you uh oh you're on my insta aren't you at the moment i am yeah what do you want to see on my website um Mm -hmm. in my live music stuff i've got a shot from uh, royal blood and that was at market arena and I've oh, left yes. it colour because it's one of my favourites that I've ever shot as well. But yeah, I totally agree with you. In the live, uh, in the big shows, the lighting is just magical uh, for for shooting. So generally, a lot. Oh, I don't know if easy is the right word, but it's. I find it easier too to to work in colour in those big, well lit, beautiful lighting shows. Ah, no, it is easy. It's like <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's like, I mean, the the thing that's hard about it is getting the moments. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're shooting, oh, I think I just went to your collections rather than I wanted to go to the... um, The portfolio one. The portfolio. The Royal Blood. There you go. Um, You still got to be able to, you know, compose the shot, make sure you get the moments. But in terms of the lighting, which is the really hard thing to learn when you start doing live music, it's so tricky because you're often at really crappy venues with really bad light. When you get to the arena shows, my God, you can shoot blindfolded. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Seriously. It's not that hard. Not going to like pretend what we do in an arena is hard. It's not. (laughs) It's like when you cut your teeth at those smaller venues, like if you can get shots at the, you know, I'm just trying to think at Northcote Social Club or, I've you know, got, those really yeah. tiny venues. I've got one for you. The old bar. Yeah. That's where I started. The old bar. Oh, my God. I shot um, Camp Cope there once and it was, I think I got one photo that I'm like, it's <laughs> so, so, and, you know, the, the crowd is like, here and you just, you know, all that stuff. That's what's hard. I would have been at that Camp Cope show. Would you? I would have. Oh, yeah, I was shooting there too. It was. It was not that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. I got one shot. (laughs) Yeah, I I probably got one or two. Like it's just the the, I I know the owners of the old bar, so I'm not going to badmouth it. But they they know it's a hard place to shoot. Like it's. Yeah, it's really really tricky. Yeah. Small, tiny, lots of people. Oh, Minza said he's got to go. Um, by the way. Uh, Seeker, a.k.a. Min. Min has just arrived into Melbourne. Uh, I'm going to say fresh off the boat, but not. He actually arrived from Dallas. He's done his um, two weeks of quarantine in Adelaide, and he's here, and I'm going to catch up with him on Thursday, which is very exciting. That's cool. So the first person that I've met from Twitch, from overseas, who's come here, is going to be in town on Thursday. We're going to catch up for lunch, which is very That's exciting. So Love it. Yes. Yes. I'm very excited. Um, anyway, we've taken up so much of your time. I feel like we should definitely let you go. It's an hour and 45 minutes. Oh, my God. It's just um, a bunch of chat, though. It's cool. It has. It's felt it's, like a long time. No, it has felt like a really great chat. I've really appreciated, like, you've just, you've taught us so much today. You've taught us about the NFT space. You've given us uh, so much inspiring art, which I think everyone's like, holy shit, just feeling inadequate right now. Like, uh, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. It's very inspiring. Uh, but I will definitely let you go. I'm going to stay around for those who want to chat uh, just for another 15 minutes or so. But we will say goodbye to Nate. Thank you so much for chatting. 